Hello and welcome to another episode of Outsu. Today we're going to discuss ITSM in the cloud or on the ground. So there's been a lot of talk about this and here to help me understand a little bit better of what's what is my good friend Dick Starks from Rystar Systems. Welcome back to the zoo, Dick. Oh, thanks, Alf. It's terrific to be here. There's been a lot of hype around the cloud in the last few years. Uh, I myself worked for a SaaS company before I came to BMC, and when we were out there, we were talking about it is SaaS or death. And if you listen to some of the vendors today, they seem to be saying that same mantra, that if you don't put it in the cloud, you're going to die out. Is that hype or is the truth to that? Is there a pro and cons for both on-premise and cloud? What's your position? Oh, well, it's certainly, it's one size does not fit all, right? So BMC, the great thing about BMC is that it has solutions that work both in the cloud or on-premise. And I've spent a fair amount of time uh, with this subject because, you know, I'm, I'm tired of going out to our customers where they, they might say, Gee, this is just too, too costly to run, or it's complicated, it's cumbersome to use, and it, it, it's, it's out of date, it'll cost me too much to, to upgrade, therefore... I've, I've got to upgrade. I've got to go to SaaS or, or, or something, something to that effect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they're being a, a little bit short-sighted, and you know, IT is really evolving, right? I mean, everything is about you know, bring your own device now. It's class ba cloud-based. Um, it's you know, the IT is becoming a broker of services now, not just a provider of services. So everybody's thinking it's got to you know, you got to get something in the cloud. Well, that's not necessarily. The, the case, and you know we've done a, a, a fair amount of, of thinking about this because we have customers that are both in the cloud and, and on premise. So you know I, I would like to talk a little bit about about that, and I, I think if you if you back up a little bit, you might say, well, well who's to blame about all this? I mean, why are these customers talking about this? Why why are they up, up, upset? And, and, and should they blame be blaming BMC right now? <laughs> and I, I say absolutely not, right? I, I mean, it, you know, Remedy may not be perfect here, but, you know, it's the whole ecosystem that's, that's yeah. to blame. And that would include systems integrators. It might include the IT departments. It might include consultancies like, like Brightstar. That cloud is not necessarily the, the be-all and end-all for, for every single IT department now. Yeah, well, what... Are there any simple delineations of saying this company should fit in the cloud, this company fits on ground? Uh, is there as simple as that, or do you have to go uh, case by case? Well, I think it's really case case by case. It really depends on what you want to do. And let me just start out and give you a real simple example. Yeah. Uh, we have been using a cloud-based product. Everybody's heard of, of Salesforce before. Okay, well, we're a small company, but we rely on Salesforce. It's a mission-critical type of, of application. We've used it now for 10 years. Yep. Okay, every every quarter we pay about $6,000 for Salesforce. So after a year, and again, for a small company, after a year, it's about $25,000 per year. You multiply that by 10, 10 years, and all of a sudden you've got you know $250,000 worth. Well, if we had gone with that on-premise-based system, would we have spent after 10 years $250,000? There's no way. Wouldn't have even been close. Do yeah. I care about that? Well, I, you know, the one thing, you know, I'm writing these, these checks every quarter, so it's not that bad. It doesn't really hit, seem to hit the pocketbook too too hard. And I, I like Salesforce. It's a good application. We get a lot of value out of it. I don't know of other products that I'd want to switch to. So from that perspective, I guess I don't really care. Okay, and I think that's kind of analogous to a lot of companies that may be moving off in, into the cloud and on any type of application, it could be service desk, it could be something just as simple as infrastructure, you know, going to Rackspace or, or Amazon, you don't really care too much about the cost. I think what you're doing is you're, you're targeting more of the, the, the performance that you're getting and the convenience. You know, we have um, a, a, a customer, and I won't, won't say the name, but they're in the financial services space, and they've been using Remedy on demand for a while. And I had a, a, a opportunity to talk there to our, um, well, it's a systems consultant. He's really a Remedy administrator there. And so I say, you know, well, tell me, what do you, you know, what do you like about Remedy on demand? And he said, well, you know, the one thing I don't miss, uh, you know, I, I don't miss these um, patching that I would always have to do. And and so I, I don't have to worry about that. And, and as a result, 
I've been able to spend my time on really rolling this out to all the areas in the organization that I think could really benefit from from having remedy. So, so it's been kind of a good thing. Now he's not on the latest version, but he's got that all scheduled. So that shouldn't be quite as big a deal for him as it may have may or may be for a, a remedy on on premise customer. Okay, so that's that's something to to you know to consider, but. Yeah. You know the the customers that we have that that uh, you know want to continue to stay uh, on premise, they're the ones. You know you may say, well, it's a it's a security issue, okay? Um, because you know if you have your own on premise based system, security is something that you can control to a, to a great extent. And you could make the argument. I you know, I've certainly heard of it. Heard where. You know, you can actually say that IT department security may be less secure than somebody else. Somebody else's, maybe a SaaS, for example, a SaaS provider. But I don't know that I really think that security is is the issue. I think it's really a control issue. And for, for example, let me give you another example. We have a, a customer that's been a long time customer, and they're going to stick with on premise. In fact, they just migrated from Service Desk Express to, to Remedy, or they're in the process of doing that, and they have a very large data center. And it's all about control. There's, there's no way that they want to, want to. I, 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 I should, I, maybe I shouldn't say hassle, but they don't really want to hassle with the thought of having to deal with a cloud-based SaaS, ITSM solution right now, because uh, they, they lose control. For example, if you wanted to make a change, depending upon who you're w working with, it may take several days. It could take longer than that in order to impact that change based upon that MSP or that cloud providers uh, change uh, policies. And they didn't want to deal with that. They, they had their own data center. They, they trusted what, what's, what's there. They, they, they just say, you know, we want to, to also stick with on-premise. We like it. And it, it, it also kind of goes back to what I was talking about, about cost as, as well. And that's where, and another area where, where I, I think if you do the numbers, and I can give you a couple of examples if you'd like, where you'll find that, that if you're going to stick with on premise, it's going to really cost you less money in the long run. Yeah, I, uh, the dirty secret is, and we did some of this market research um, a few years ago uh, before BMC software, and we looked at the cost, and we realized after three to five years, you hit a break-even part, and after that, depending on how big your maintenance is, but after that, the on premise start to make you money, or at least cost you less than it would normally. So. Uh, the, the Benioff's and his mantra notwithstanding, it's not as simple as cost. But one thing I've heard from people who like it in the cloud, and, and one of them is uh, one of America's largest food companies, they said we're in the food business. We're not in the IT infrastructure business. Right. Because running a software like Remedies that manages your entire IT world, right. it's not like Salesforce. Salesforce is a, is a rolling index on steroids. IT management software or nuclear scientists compared to that. So you need an entire infrastructure and you need to manage it beyond just the change management, which is a good point because it's a bigger problem than a lot of people think. So his idea was if you allow me to manage IT rather than manage the infrastructure I need to manage IT, it helps me. So he went with Remedy on the man and other. Are there a lot of those out there who feel that? Is it, are we going toward that trend that they don't they want to worry about the infrastructure, you just want to manage their own world? Well, I, I think so. I, I mean, but what's going to happen to the IT departments, right? I mean, I, I guess if I were in IT and I'm seeing that the infrastructure is moving into the cloud, then I, I better not be a, a server guy, right? I better make sure that the, whatever I am, I'm, uh, it, you know, very high up on the on the food chain in terms of complexity, because those are the kind of people in IT that are going to get to get to keep their jobs. Now, I'm not saying that people are going to lose their jobs in IT. But certainly, if you're if you're involved in something that's become commoditized, you, you know what what you know why why are you still there? You know, work on something that's a little bit more more complicated. And I, I think you'll be around maybe get involved in the ERP package. I mean, I, I, you know, certainly ITSM mature ITSM and sometimes gets a bad rap. I sometimes say, well, that's that's too complicated. We don't you know we don't want to use something like that. But um, you know, that's 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 certainly a possibility. Um, Back to the, I, I just want to go back to the cost uh, yeah. area again a little bit. Let's, let's dissect that a little bit more because there's there's different ways to look at this, and we did have done some analysis based upon remedy versus 
remedy on demand, okay? And then we did the same thing, because BMC has all these different products, and we did the same, we, we looked at, okay, well, footprints, which is typically on-premise, versus remedy force, okay? Mm -hmm. And in the first case, we did a, a study, and we did this for a, a very large government customer, and they were considering move, moving away, you know, on-premise versus on-demand, and, and they are going to have these products typically for a long time. I mean, in large government agencies, and probably large enterprises for, for that matter, the, the products are sticky. I mean, once you start with Remedy or a Remedy competitor, you're probably going to stick with it. You know, you know, once you make that decision, you know, no matter what, okay? Yeah. And so, given that you're going to have the product for probably at least five years, it's not something that you're just going to say, okay, well, I'll go to ServiceNow, and if it doesn't work out, well, next year I'll switch back to Remedy. I mean, you know, it, it might happen, right? I mean, it could, but it's not as it's not as likely because you make it's it not the and, yeah. Right. It, it it wouldn't be so. So that's why I think it's important if, you know, you fully understand what you're getting into. And there's a lot of different variables. And if you look, for example, at what ServiceNow says about this, no matter how you slice it from a ServiceNow perspective, it's always going to be much cheaper. Your ROI is going to be much higher if you go in the cloud with ServiceNow versus uh, on-premise with, with Remedy. But what they aren't really taking into consideration is how easy it is to use Remedy now. Okay, on an on-premise version. For example, there's these things called overlays. After you've been, been at version 7604, when you're going to upgrade, it's, it's kind of like you know doing a Microsoft Office upgrade. So you're not really having to deal with these long, drawn-out upgrade uh, processes that you may have had to do deal with in the past. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, if you're going to be using service now, there's still going to be an upgrade process. You're not going to just come in one morning. You know, you're on the old version. The next morning, you're on the new. There's going to be some planning that's going to go go, go behind all of that. So it's not it, it's 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 just not it's 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 not the case. And so if you if you figure, well, maybe you're going to pay a little bit more money to install an on-premise in, in terms of labor cost, okay? And then there's certainly some some hardware costs that you would have to deal deal with. And we looked when we did our analysis, we looked at the cost of what the hardware cost. Of, of rack space, what, what that would cost, and to do some of these sophisticated things like the disaster recovery and, and everything else that you might get from, a, you know, a service a managed service provider that, that where you buy from, from the cloud, and we looked at that, and we looked at the implementation cost being relatively similar, maybe a little bit more for, for on premise, and then we figured that, you know. Once, especially if you're an enterprise user, you're going to want to have an administrator. You're going to need an administrator if you're using it on demand or if you're using it on premise. And so, if you add all these things up over a period of time, and about it, 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 at about five years or so, you're going to see significant uh, price advantage if you stay on premise. Okay. And we did the same thing with Remedy Force and, and Footprints. And Remedy Force is not that expensive. And uh, Rem it's, well, Remy Force is not that expensive, but neither is Footprints. And yeah, exactly. Footprints is an on-premise, you know, a product, and the maintenance it doesn't really cost that much. So that's where you see some significant savings if you're going to just stick with something like Footprints rather than go to Remedy Force. But but again, then with Footprints there are some upgrades that you would have to deal with down the road, and it is an on-premise uh, application. So there'd be some some maintenance that you would would have to deal with, but. You know, strictly from a dollars and, and cents perspective, and, and taking a look at the disk cost and so on, you're still going to save money with an on-premise solution. And, and you know what? That's why years ago, and you've probably heard this before, but BMC had tried to move into an on-demand product, and nobody bought it. And the reason they didn't buy it is they looked at the numbers and they said it just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And 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 so it didn't really sell very well. But then what's what's happened is that other companies have come out and they have proven, especially companies that only sell uh, on on demand or SaaS version, that it does sell. And and so it's put BMC in kind of a conundrum here where they, you know, they, they offer both. And so now they're being sort of asked to justify, well, what's best, one or one or one or the other, whereas some of the other competitors out there may say, well, you know, don't even bother with that. We only got one solution, it's the best one. You know, that that sort of thing. But that's not the case. Um, it's kind of like what I like to say. Uh, owning Remedy is kind of like for most customers. It's kind of like having a Ferrari that's parked in your garage. And why not take advantage of what you already own and get it out of the garage and and, and get it onto the freeway where you're going to be able to to really make some hay. So and 
and, and that's kind of what we we're trying to do is to, to really work with a lot of customers that we already have that already have Remedy that have it in an on-premise version, get them upgraded to the latest version, and make sure they're getting some, some real value out of, out of this application that, that, that they're using right now. And, and, and that's, that's interesting that's you bring up. Yeah, it's interesting mm -hmm. you bring up value because we've got so fixated on the delivery mechanism, which is more of an advantage to the SaaS vendor, for example, is they who benefit from having a single platform, not that anyone in the other than Remedy Force, there are no ITSM, pure ITSM SaaS platforms. Everything is hosted, uh, one right. way or another. So we got fixated on that, but the, what you brought up was value, is, and, and I, I see a lot of customers went out, they're talking to them. As a perfect example is what you're talking about, Ferrari. They use the service desk, they sprinkle a little bit of change management on it, but they don't take advantage of the full suite. And that's not only for BMC, that HPCA would sit there and say the same thing. Do you think that's going to change now because IT is becoming far more intense? We as users of IT are expecting more, our work demands more, the future is going to usher in more. Do you think that we that the IT department will now take the Ferrari out for a spin? Is that what we're going to see? Well, uh, that's, that's really what we're trying to, to, to push for. Uh, for example, I just went down to a, a customer of ours, a relatively new customer. They're doing a remedy upgrade right now. And they're making some pretty good progress. But, you know, like a lot of things, uh, IT right now is really not number one on the list of things to get done. And, or, I, excuse me, I meant to say ITSM, okay? Yeah. And so, you know, the, the, the challenge is, well, how do you get it moved up the, the priority list so that people really understand the value? And I think that's kind of what our job is. So one of the th things that I had suggested was an, an ITSM day. Or, and maybe we'll just make it a half a day, but, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to go in there and we're going to show them... Um, you know, a couple of workshops, and we're going to start with uh, a service request management and service catalog, and we're going to do a workshop so that this is something that they need to move to because that's another area where they're going to see incredible value if they can get a system, or maybe a request management system at a, at a minimum, and hopefully get to more more of a, a service, a true service catalog down the road where they're going to get to order maybe laptops or desktops and. You know, a couple of things. We want to start simple, to, to really make it make it look easy with uh, with with having a, a mature ITSM system like that. So we got to get the people excited about that. And we thought rather than try to do this remotely, we come in and bring it in, be there in person. And we've also asked BMC to come in and help us out as well. And we want to show them uh, my IT. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. Because in this particular group, even though it's a government agency, they all have iPads and, and tablets and so on. So I thought, wow, you know, why not, right? So they've actually already bought uh, some IIT and they're going to use it. And so we want to get them excited about that too. So we'll have some, you know, how do this is what, how we're going to set up your service catalog, just kind of a, a short session to get people energized about it. And then we're going to do the same thing with my my IT, and we're going to get kind of well, what do you want? How do you want to set up the, the menus? Uh, you know, we may be rolling out version version two of that. I'm not I'm not exactly sure what where we are, but there's a lot we can do, and a lot of a lot of people that would would say, okay, I get it now. This makes a lot of sense. We should have been focusing more on on this this Ferrari that we have parked in the garage, and let's do it and let's make something make something happen because that's what we want to do. It's it's really our job as as you know consultancies. To, to make sure that they're getting the, the right value. And that's where I think our efforts really need to be focused now. No, I couldn't agree more with you. I think the value is what we need to articulate more clearly uh, so people understand what they own. And they already own it. it you yeah. know, we're not talking about large additional costs here. It's, it's some tweaking and some refocusing of priorities and boom. You're in a Ferrari yeah. on the freeway, so yeah. Well, let me, and then that, that kind of reminds me because I, I do a, a weekly blog and I'm writing about um, Apollo 13 right now, yes. and um, what was the name of your blog and where can where can one find it? <laughs> well, it's pretty. It's uh, it's dickonestark.com. That's uh, that's all there is to it. And uh, so the ne the next issue is going to be about about Apollo 13, and everybody knows you know what happened. It's a, it's one of the better better known stories, and it really in in the world where you the objective was to bring these guys back back to Earth alive, right? And so you may think, well, what the heck does Apollo 13 have to do with 
ITSM? Mm -hmm. And the answer, the answer is it's really all about problem solving. And so we have this the simulation. We didn't in invent it, but we, we certainly uh, have access to this program. And BMC offers it uh, as, as well. And so what that means is that you come in, and you might have a whole group of people. Somebody's a mission control director. You have some level one people. You have an incident manager. You have a problem manager. There's somebody at the chains. There's level three people. And again, the whole objective then is to get return the astronaut safely to the Earth. So this was just last Friday we were doing this, and and uh, the first go round uh, the, the the astronauts didn't make it back. And the the reason is because we the, the communication wasn't all that good. We didn't have the proper service level uh, agreements in place. We didn't understand the priorities and involved. You know, we get, had all these tickets come in and and. You know, we didn't know which was important and which which one was not, and, and we focused too much on the what's it, what's it called the, the small stuff. We we're sweating the small stuff too much, and we didn't realize that we need to focus on some of these other things that were critical to to bringing these guys back home alive. And it was really a good lesson for everybody that was in the, the room. Is kind of a how ITSM works. It's the same way that you know NASA may may work when they're dealing with these types difficult types of problem solving challenges. And so a lot of people that were taking the session, they got it. They understood. They said, wow, you know, we never really thought that, you know, it was just a necessary evil, right? There's the whole ITSM group and the, the whole service test that we have. We get it. There's some real value here. So that's kind of what I'm, you know, that's what I'm talking about. And, yeah. and uh, by educating people to the importance of that and showing them that, you know, there's options. You know, SAS is, is great. On-premise still works fine, too. That the whole idea is to continue to, to move forward and, and recognize that value. Yeah, so. now, that's interesting. I, I'm actually going to look forward to reading that. And uh, we've done something similar at BMC that we had an airport simulation. And the first time you give it a go, you you, you couldn't get a plane right. off the ground. You really <laughs> <have that water. laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's you know what? Um, I, I'm reading a you know I, I like to read, and I'm reading a book right now, and it's called The Martian, and it's guy find it. The guy's name is Andy Weir that uh, wrote this book, and so it's a fictional book. It takes place in the future, and a Mars mission has just departed uh, the, the Mars, and they're going back to Earth, and they've left a guy, an astronaut, accidentally. You, might, you have to read the book to figure out all, all this, but they, yeah. anyway, they left a guy, accidentally left the guy behind on on, the, on Mars. So the objective is, well, what do you you know? How do you how do you get if you think you know getting somebody back? Uh, from Apollo 13 was difficult. How about somebody that's 120 million miles away? And the whole point of this book is it's all about problem solving because this astronaut that's left behind is, just gets into one predicament after another. And it's you know I I, I don't want to spoil the, the book for anybody that might read it, but it's really worth a, a, a good read and it's it's also a fun way to to, uh, to think about problem solving. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, thank you, Dick. I really appreciate you taking the time coming to the zoo and sure. educate us. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Okay. And I hope I can have, have you back soon. Okay. Well, thanks for having me. Thank okay. You. For the rest of you out there, take care. Be safe. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.